recording. Okay, very good. Um, and just a reminder, this isn't an official uh, document. And um, so with that, um, I guess we can jump in and we're glad to do school committee things first. So, uh, so you guys don't have to go through the minutia with us. Uh, do we need introduction, Liz, or uh, you felt you, you so school committee people want to jump in? So the purpose of this is to fill the um, remainder from Jill Palenstein's term on the Plimpton School Committee for one year. So why don't, why don't I start by, uh, we'll call the school committee uh, to order because we haven't done that yet. It's 533. And we have uh, one from the school committee. Um, we have both Amy and Mike who are current members. Uh, Dan Cadigan was elected this weekend with almost as many votes as you got, Mark. So congratulations <laughs> to the two of you. Um, Dan is, uh, has not been sworn in yet, so Dan will not be voting tonight, but he, is, he, will, he will be shortly. And um, despite the blessed best laid plans, um, we were gonna to get together tonight to appoint me to that one year term. But since uh, I got 14 votes and was the only one to get <laughs> See what happens when you ask people not to do stuff. Um, uh, I have, I have, uh, I have accepted the the uh, election and was sworn in uh, today. Um, so I am now the third member in the full forum for the tonight's meeting. So with that, with us being a nimble bunch of people, we decided that we would ask from the school committee's recommendation that we would ask. Um, the Board of Selectmen to consider Jason for that one year remainder of Jill's term. And a Amy or Mike, do you have any objections to that? Well, we probably should do a motion for that, I think. So I, I would make that motion. No objection. Okay, do I have a second to the motion to do that? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So. Down to the Board of Selectmen, do you have any questions or I'll talk so about now, um, Board of Selectmen, you'll want to take a vote um, to appoint Jason Frazier to that one year remaining in that term for the Plimpton School Committee. So I'll make that motion. Um, I'll uh, second. Any discussion uh, from Board of Selectmen? Um, yep. I do have one question. Is this yep. for the Dennett Elementary School Committee? Yes. yes. Okay. All right, so and we, then I also wanted to know, will that go from now until June 30th and then again from July 1st to June 30th, 21? Um, it, technically, it's filling the remainder of that term. So whatever the dates on that term are, are going to be the dates that it goes from. So it'll be until the next election and... Um, that person gets sworn in and everything. Okay, so we have a motion and a second, and uh, all those in favor of appointing Jason, as, as noted, say aye. 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 Okay, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, and um, so with that, uh, I don't think there's any other special school committee business. I would, uh, I would accept a motion to adjourn. I Amy. second. Mike, you want to move it, and then Amy can second it. Oh. Yes, I make a motion that I make a motion we adjourn. Okay, and Amy seconds. So we are. I in, second. Great. So we're in adjournment for uh, the school committee. So the school committee members, you can stay if you want, or run away and enjoy your evening, or enjoy your evening here. And don't worry, we'll keep working. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank, you thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. John, are you going to stick around, John Williamson? I am. Awesome. Cool. Um, so the chair is now here, so you can uh, take over again, Christine. Did you do the, the little disclaimer? I'm sure you took care of all that, right? Yeah. Okay, yes. perfect. All right. So we have, what, a poll hearing? Yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. So um, do we need to uh, call the uh, poll hearing or open the poll hearing? 
Or do yes, you have that re should... or organization? Reorganize? Yeah, why don't we organize, reorganize the board first and then we'll... Um... Not not that Crack I'm in that it. much of a rush to do that, but. Maybe. Oh, I am, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So um, I'll make a motion that um, Mark Russo serve as um, our the chairman for the Board of Selectmen. I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, John, Christine. do you want me to do the secretary? Uh, I'm willing to do it if you would rather. I would rather, John. Okay. <laughs> If you'll make a motion, I'll be the All clerk. Right. I'll make a motion that we appoint um, John Trainer as um, clerk. And I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All right. It's all yours, Mark. Uh, well, we need a vice chair, so I'll make a motion right. that Christine Joy be the vice chair. I'll second me, that. Me, me. Okay. <laughs> all in favor? So. Aye. Aye. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, now it's all yours. <laughs> so we'll dive in. I, I normally start my meetings with some ground rules, but I think I'll save that for the first full meeting that I'm chair. And I, you know, I, I used to talk about um, ground rules like civility and transparency and bringing along some joy and laughter. Uh, I'm going to see if I can come up with something new. So far, I have no swearing, well, no spitting and no swearing. But already, I think the disclaimer is, is like not too much swearing, but I'm going to work on that and uh, we'll have more next time. But <laughs> that actually leads into um, one bit of um, um, that I'll mention now and lay the seeds for when we get down to the item called review of the parking lot. Um, the parking lot originally, I originally introduced that term along with my other ground rules. It actually comes from a, a, a mentor named uh, Natasha Dresden, who was an emigre from Russia and a, um, an executive coach and later a nonprofit world governance coach. Um, but uh, she presented it and the way we used to use it when we called it a ground um, uh, a parking lot in the Board of Selectmen is I would hold up a legal pad and remind people that some issues might come up that couldn't fully be discussed in the night and that we would add them to the parking lot. And the intent was to assure people that even if we were constrained by open meeting law or constrained by time or constrained by energy, that things wouldn't get lost. And I, I, when we get down to our review of parking lot, I am going to propose that we go back to the old way of calling this, that this, in fact, be the parking lot. And that list of things that we'll look at a little later tonight might be called something like um, selectmen's projects and priorities or something of the like. So we don't have to act on that now. I just wanted to start off with something that sounded a little chairman-like. And now we got that out of the way. And now we can get to the important stuff like poll hearing. Um, so, um, um, and so I, I think in a hearing like this, generally we deal with a, a portion which is collecting evidence and then we deliberate and decide. I don't think we'll get terribly uh, technical on any of this, but um, in the collecting evidence part, uh, the first part would be to hear from people in favor of, um, uh, considering the application of Eversource, and then we'll hear for people that are against it. Um, Liz, I don't know if you want to introduce this a little of what the what the um, the nature of this project is. Sure. So it's somewhat of a routine request, but I don't believe we've had one in quite some time. It does require a hearing. Um, notice was properly given out. And this is to consider the application of Eversource, um, the branch that is based at 273 Summer Street in Plymouth. And they have one petition before us covering the installation of one pole on Spring Street. And the purpose of it is to raise the cable due to low hanging wires. Um, they have deemed this a hazard that needs to be addressed. Um. So anyone um, want to speak in favor of the pro of the application? So hearing none, anyone want to speak against the application? So I think we can.
close the uh, evidentiary part of the hearing and going on to deliberating and deciding. Um, any discussion? So do I hear a motion then to accept the application? I'll make a motion that we accept the application. And I'll second. So um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Okay. So I think with that, we can close the hearing. Yes. <laughs> that may be the shortest hearing I've ever done. <laughs> Thank it's you. Good. Okay. So Liz, there'll be some documents to sign and we'll have to pop in at some point. Yes, Bridgette has the documents in the office and um, Bree, correct me if I'm wrong, you're planning to leave those on top of the file cabinet? Yes, I'll leave them in the same spot. They're all tabs. Um, so you can come in at your convenience and not have to worry with the um, getting checked in and stuff. But okay. everybody. And then once it's signed, I can send that to Karen Ray of Eversource. Okay. Um, She's the right of way agent for Eversource. So. And she was on the call a minute ago, too. Okay. Um, so I guess we'll just go down the list in order, though when we get to um, the COVID update and the town admin update, we might move that down a little further. Um, so we did the appointment to the school committee. We have reorganized. Um, so we are now up to the auditing contract continuation. So this is a request um, to sign a three-year continuation of contract with Lynch Marini and Associates. Um, our typical auditor that gets assigned to us from there is Grady Connor. And this would be for a three year contract and would cover the auditing through June 30th of 2022. And they have been doing an excellent job for us for quite some time. They're very thorough, very reliable. And in addition to that, um, it seems like the proper thing to do, especially in light of everything going on, it would be nice to have one last thing of our plates and know that we're solidified with a competent firm for the next few auditing cycles. So, so the we'll just only, be looking for a vote. Yeah, the only um, note I'll make is last year, I believe we signed a one year contract Correct. And that was done because the Department of Revenue has recommended that we not continue endlessly with the same auditors. But I agree with um, Liz that given the COVID-19 uh, agenda, we just, we need to put this one behind us and move on. And I have no problem as with them as auditors. I'm also totally comfortable with that approach. I'm fine too. Okay, so I make a motion that we go ahead and um, uh, sign the contract continuation. I'll second oh. that. All right. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Um, oh, excuse me, um, Mr. Chairman, through you. Um, I did notice that on the contract, there's only one spot to sign. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. I'll send it to you, Mark, to sign okay. as the chairman. Okay, very good. Um, I'm sorry, who gave the second on that? Are we going to uh, keep it as a little bit? I did, Bree. You did. Okay, will you stay as the second on the vote then? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Christine, you want to be the second from now on? Let's see. I thought that would we could never pry that away from you, John. I'm amazed you're even offering. Well, you know, I've offered to be clerk, so I, I think that's as far as I can go. <laughs> uh, so, so I used to write you JT a second, though. <laughs> I, well, we don't have to make a permanent decision. We can see how it goes. Um, Okay, so I think we'll just, we have the COVID update and the town and min update, but I think maybe we ought to do the review or the, forgive me, uh, the fiscal year 21 appointments next, um, just to get that out of the way. Um, so I think we all received that earlier today. Um, have you, John and Christine, had a chance to take a peek at it? 
the uh, list of appointments? I have not. Okay. I have not either. That came today. I don't think I saw it. Uh, yeah. It did come today. Okay. This, this afternoon. Um, there are a couple ways to go here. I, I, unfortunately, we've ended up in the same kind of scenario we have where we end up dealing with this at the end of June. It's actually kind of been a pet peeve of mine. And I vowed last year that we'd get to this uh, um, uh, in May. So we had time to really look at it uh, between town meeting and elections and COVID. Um, here we are at the end of June again. Um, I'm not sure how to proceed. Uh, so is this all the appointments to boards and committees that we've talked about? Yeah. So this is a long list. It is. If anybody who's, oh, I'm sorry, if anybody who's expiring, so it would be the highway. It's the clerk's office. It's Colleen, Christine. Um, I mean, I, I'm not going to be opposed to anybody who <laughs> wants to volunteer for service. I think that's <laughs> fantastic. It's also some town employees, like most of the employees with the t that work in the townhouse, the highway department, mm -hmm. um, so look, fire department. Like it's all, yeah. it's all the town employees who are not under contract or appointed uh, otherwise. And the problem with this is their their appointments expire uh, July first, which is before our next meeting, and I don't think we want people unappointed uh, open positions. So I, I do see a few things on here that, that are corrections, but at worst, maybe we just have to go down the list, um, make our votes and understand that there might be a few corrections along the way. Does that make sense? I got the list from Nancy and updated it the best that I could with what I had. Um, I, no, I know you did, and I, most of it's very, very good. I, I did just see a couple things that... Uh, um, that Could we do correct. this similar to town meeting where we just read them off and we'll put yeah. a hold on anything that's um, a question? My, my next words were going to be something to that effect. Um, would that be okay with you, Christine? Absolutely. Okay, so forgive me, it's a fairly long list, but at least we'll get it done. So Area 58, these are all people whose appointments are expiring the end of this month. Um, and so we would be reappointing them to the, the various terms. So Area 58 is Karen Foy and Mark Russo. Um, Animal Inspector, um, Brian Kling. Um, Okay, animal control officer. Hold. Assessor's assistant, Wendy Jones. Um, Board of Health is Kevin Ford, um, Amos Wood. Building inspector is Tom Milius. And then there's, a, uh, and then William Kelly Jr. CPC, Rich Burnett, Mark Russo. Conservation, Richard, um, Burnett. Um, and then on my list, it has John Mathias, but he is no longer part of the Conservation Commission. It also okay. has on my list, Brian Vaza, but he's a staffer, not a member of the Conservation Commission. Um, and then Council... Does he still get appointed, Mark? He does. Okay, so we'll leave that... He needs off. to get appointed as the Conservation Agent. Okay. Uh, Council on Aging... Uh, Inez Murphy and Joy Marble is director. Uh, Cultural Council, um, M. Elizabeth Randall, Heather Sanda, um, Nathaniel Sides, Elizabeth Wesley has my name on there, um, but I can't be on apparently because I'm a selectman, so I shouldn't be. Oh. Um, okay. Jean Take Cohen, off. Gail Knight, Jennifer Zanoli. Um, uh, Huh. Dennett School is Jason Frazier. Well, in fact, we, we appointed him already. Uh, uh, you, you don't have any appointments over the Dennett School because it's elected. Yeah. Okay. To be on that. All right. So that, I guess, should go off this list. Uh, All right. EMT is Robert Furlot. And then, um, Bree, you probably have that list in front of you. 
are all the rest of those people, the next seven or eight people, um, I don't think they're EMTs. I think they're maybe the public em emergency. It's, it's supposed to be emergency, emergency management. Right. Um, it's the emergency management team. That's what the EMT is. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. That makes sense. Uh, forgive me. So EMTs are the next, all these ones on the list. Robert I'll spell that out. Um, uh, John Solstead, Art Moran, Morin, um, Kathy Ferguson, Stephen Silva, Matt Clancy, and Elizabeth Denny. Um, Dennehy. Uh, Harry Jason Park Study Group, uh, Robert Doucette, Health uh, Officer. Uh, it's listed as Kathleen Drinan, but uh, I, I, she is not anymore. And I don't know who anyone yes. knows. It's Kevin Forg, who's listed up above at Board of Health. Okay, good. Uh, Mark. Yeah. They appoint their own anyway. They're an elected board. The Board of Health appoints their own health agent. Okay, so we shouldn't deal with that at all. No. Good. Off the list it goes. Um, highway, uh, Robert Furlot, uh, Carl Johnson, Tom Fuller, Ben Sorrow? Yes. Okay. Historic Commission, Jennifer McDonald, John Wilhelmson, uh, Open Space, Vicki Alberti, Linda Letty, uh, Plumbing Gas Inspector, Douglas Hawthorne, uh, Board of Registrar, Shirley Martin, uh, Town Clerk, uh, um, Nancy Magnuson as assistant. We don't make that appointment. Okay. We don't make that appointment. No. Good. That's the town clerk. Uh, okay, so I don't do it for, for that because she put herself on that. Bree, I'm updating the um, list for you as we go through. No, we don't have a point awesome. over the assistant. The town clerk appoints her own. Um, will you Great. share with us the final list, uh, particularly for next year? Uh, I'm making updates to the file that Bree sent out, and I'll email it out after this. Great. Okay. Great. Um, awesome. Treasurer Christine Kelly, Colleen Morin. Um, Colleen Morin is a contract employee. She doesn't need to be on here. Okay. Oh, excuse uh, me, Liz. Yeah. They, they said that last year, and I guess she did have to be sworn in for something that she does, and we had to put her back for on highway, it. For her role at the highway department, she needs to be. Um, for the transfer station for selling the stickers, but she's a contract employee for a treasurer collector and not subject to a reappointment. Her term is doesn't end June 30th. Liz, why don't you move her under highway? Okay. And I'm also going to add Christine Kelly under highway as well and okay. keep her okay. treasurer. Okay, great. Okay. Because um, uh, what Colleen did last time, she used something that her swearing in from just from the town clerk's office, and she used it for some bond that she had to do. Well, if she needs to do that, like we could do that for her on her own. But I don't want to get it okay. confused with contract employees because her contract goes well beyond June thirtieth. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So I'm gonna cross that up. Uh, onward, uh, veteran service agent Roxanne Whitbeck, wire and inspector Steve Peterson, Linus Varley, Dave Alberti, Tom Milius, and Colleen Thompson. Oh, forgive me. Um, <laughs> wire inspector is the first two, uh, Stephen uh, Peterson and Linus uh, Varley. ZBA is David Alberti, Tom Milius, and Colleen Thompson. So that needs to change. CBA is David Alberti, Kenneth Thompson, and Colleen Thompson. And then Tom Milius is the zoning enforcement officer. Okay. So I'll make that change on here. Okay. And I also don't see, um, let me see. And I know you're just doing the best you can, Brie, like you were provided this list. Um, I'm just looking here. Did anything get mentioned for, um, I'm just thinking of our employees, like 
Kathy Canizo in the building department want me to put her in under building inspector? She's the administrative assistant and under wage and personnel. Sure. They said she didn't have to be sworn in before. I, I don't know if maybe they weren't keeping up with it properly, but she's a basic wage and personnel employee that would need it every year. Um, you should be on here, Bree. I was and they took me off. Yeah, I don't know why. Um, regular town employees who are under like wage and personnel um, should be on here. Like same thing with Allison Mary from the assessor's office. Also Kathy Ferguson. Um, well, so Kathy Ferguson is appointed by the Board of Health because they are elected, but I'm wondering about Wendy Jones. I believe that the Board of Assessors has appointing authority as well because they're they do. elected. So even though she falls under personnel like for benefits administration, that's the Board of Assessors appointment. So what I'm gonna do on here, um, let's see. I added Kathy under building. Under Assessors, I'm gonna change Wendy out and we should let them know that the Board of Assessors needs to renew her. And I'm gonna fill her thing in with Alice and Mary, because she's our responsibility. Um, and I'm just trying to kind of picture the offices and if we're leaving anybody out. I don't think so. Um, so am I doing a flip for Allison, Liz? Yes. Um, I'll send you the updated thing. I'm just looking. I'm sorry, while I was doing this, did you say Board of Registrar or is that not us that does that? Is that the town clerk? We didn't mention Board of Registration. Oh, there it is. Forgive me. I, maybe yes, I yes. missed that. Board of Registrar is Shirley Martin. Okay, I don't know if that's ours or not. That would be a question that someone, I think that's the town clerk's purview, but I'm not 100% on that. All right. I'm sure okay. she'll know who she needs to appoint, but. So I, one thing, let's all make a mental note. Next year, we want to do this in May. Um, I, I think we had yes. two holds. Um, on animal inspector and animal control officer. I thought Brian resigned. Uh, so no, um, he decided that he's going to stay with us for a while. Yay. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm dog sitting. <laughs> wow, those sound like little tiny dogs, like corgi dogs. Three corgis. Wow. I think they just voted. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so I think that took care of all the holds. Um, I just, Bree, if you would make note that I am going to stain on voting for myself on Area 58. Um, I'm not sure I have to, but it's better that I do. And also on CPC, I'll abstain from voting for myself. And then, Bree, do they give you something typically for the, just like a blanket one for the Oh, I remember actually, now that I'm thinking of it, going over this after. I believe with police department, once they're on for one year, we don't have to keep renewing the appointments. Correct. Um, okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't missing anything. Should we put one in, though, for Leanne Cashman? She should have one. Cause I she's didn't do her either. I'm going to add her. So that's police department, Leanne Cashman, their administrative assistant. Okay. Should we add the person that we just appointed um, at town meeting? Because I think his term went till the end of this year. Yeah, I that think you're Zach, right. Zach Baldwin, right? You know what I think we should do with any of the patrolmen or the special police officers the majority of them will be covered because they've all been here more than a year, but maybe we should take a blanket vote that anybody who was recently appointed, that you're automatically going to extend those appointments through June 30th, 
just so that we're covered and we don't end up in a position where someone falls through the cracks with that. And we can get a complete list from um, Matt Clancy on that, okay. just so we have all the names on file. But I think that that's, that would be my suggestion, is to do a reappointment of anyone appointed to the Plimpton Police Department within the last year who's still considered a probationary or new employee. That sounds good because we don't have their names. It's right. more than just We've this, done uh, quite a few know. just recently, so I yes, think we have a safer option. All right. Um, any other discussion on the list? All right, so I'll make a motion that we appoint all the person people mentioned on this list uh, to another term in their present position. I'll second the motion. <laughs> she's, You're it. She, she's, she's got a lot of learning to do on this. <laughs> um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we made it. And Mark, you abstain from Area 58 and CPC. I, the, the, or I, I abstain from voting for myself on those. On those. And Bree, I think on mine for emergency management, the last time they did it, they gave me an indefinite term. So I don't need a new slip. Okay. That's okay. like a lifetime uh -huh. appointment? Yes. Beautiful. It's like bordering on like a key to the town. <laughs> wow. Yeah, don't smile about lifetime appointments. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, anything else on that? All right, so now we, uh, we get into really a, a bunch of stuff related to Liz. COVID-19, updates, planning, discussion, town and min updates and correspondence. So for as far as COVID-19 is concerned, um, Obviously, you were all there. Town meeting was a success. Um, I think we can all be very pleased with the way that things went and the efforts that were put forth as far as setup and really execution of, of everything, right down to all the details. Um, we couldn't have asked for it to go any better. And I do believe that people felt at least somewhat secure being there, which is a nice thing. Um, so hats off to everybody. It was a team effort and we made it. As far as other COVID updates, we have two active cases in town currently. Um, the previous cases are considered clear. So there's the two active status currently. Um, right now we're working on plans for the fall and winter and working on getting our fire and police department and our board of health adequately stocked with supplies. And we're also in process of determining different reimbursable costs with the county funding through the CARES Act. Um, Chief Silva has taken the lead on that and we've already applied for one round of reimbursement. Um, you can send requests in, I believe it's up to every two weeks and they reimburse on a rolling basis. So we have another large one that we're working on now um, to put together. And we're going to be coordinating with John Willemson and Peter Venito at Dennett to see if there's anything that they may need to put in for um, that's COVID related and unforeseen expense. Um, same thing we're working right now as far as any residual town meeting expenses, such as the audio visual company, for example, um, that helped facilitate us having a socially distant town meeting. That's all being um, applied for. So we're really just working on kind of obtaining the supplies we need and making sure that the reimbursement requests are being processed in a timely manner. Um, we're also working with the Board of Health. They received a secondary Board of Health grant and they're helping us out too as far as some of the supplies. Um, Art Moran worked with them and they were able to get us reimbursed for the money we spent when ServPro came out and sprayed the buildings that first time um, before Halifax became involved with that. So. Um, they're doing a lot in that regard too, to, to get these expenses processed. 
Um, that said, it is being managed very closely. We have to be careful that there's no um, duplicate submissions, if you will. So we have to keep all the Board of Health stuff separate. Um, once you've applied for that funding, you cannot then also apply to be reimbursed a second time under the CARES money, obviously. Um, so we're working through all of that. Um, otherwise, it's been pretty much business as usual at the townhouse. I'd say that a few more people have been coming to the building to conduct business, but overall, honestly, it hasn't been all that busy, all things considered. Um, mainly people coming in for the treasurer collector's office. Um, the assessor's office has had a little bit of foot traffic. Building departments had a little bit of foot traffic. Um, but overall, you know, everything's pretty much status quo. Um, we sent out an update today to the board and committee members, just kind of letting them know where things stand. And then we also sent a similar update out to the folks who work at the townhouse, just kind of reminding people not to become complacent or to let your guard down and to continue following all of the protocols that we put in place. Um, so that's really it as far as COVID related, unless you have any questions for me. Uh, I, I really appreciate you sending that out, uh, that reminder, because uh, yeah, I can start getting routine and um, I really appreciate people staying on top of it. Do we have a preference or are we encouraging people to prefer to use phone when possible as versus coming in or? Um, that's the preference, but we also, I don't know, it's a fine line. We are all there to provide a public service. So I don't want to go so overboard with that message that we're defending taxpayers from feeling welcome at the building. I mean, anyone from town who's a taxpayer is more than welcome to come to the building when we're open if they prefer to conduct business in person. And I think that's important. I feel like a lot of the small town kind of good feeling people would normally get from the townhouse, I feel like a lot of that unfortunately has been diminished because of COVID. So I just think that even though, yes, I mean, obviously if it can be done electronically, well, that's preferred. I just would hesitate to, at least for me personally, I don't want to seem like I'm pushing that message too much. And I don't think that any of us from the emergency management team, and I'm even sure the three of you as elected officials, we don't want to seem like we're discouraging people or telling people stay away. Um, but as long as people are healthy and everything, if they want to come to the building to conduct their business, um, they're more than welcome to do so. John, did you have something? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, a couple things. One, yeah, I thought that I thought the note out to boards and committees was great. I think it was a great timing, and I thought it was well done. So, so thank you for that. Thank um, you. Just, just so that you guys know, we we have two things that we're looking for from from the Bennett perspective. Uh, one is being able to have appropriate, you know, PPE supplies and stuff like that, um, and um, I believe that Peter Vinjo's. Uh, Office is working directly with the chief on that. I'm going to follow up on that tomorrow to make sure that we're moving along so that we can try and get some of that funding out of the plant uh, bucket of cares. The other piece that we're doing is um, uh, additional um, Chromebooks uh, because the expectation is there will be some level of remote learning next year. Period. Um, whether that is intern, whether that's mixed in with in-person learning, um, we do not have any guidance from the state yet. It still hasn't come out, so we're still sort of guessing. But uh, Steve Pello went through, looked across district for each of the schools uh, and made recommendations. The one thing that you know I think we should be more proud of is that we have had a pretty big push on technology at the Dennett for the last five years in order to be able to deal with standardized testing and make sure that the students have what they need to be successful in the classrooms. So the actual request is much smaller for Dennett than it is for many of the other schools. Um, and of course, the high school is a one-to-one -one Chromebook. They all, every student gets a Chromebook issued and they're, and they're freshmen, so that's a little different. But they do believe with having lent out so many machines that there's gonna be a certain increased rate of things coming back in a little less than perfect condition. Um, and some might not even come back depending on how that goes, but 
Um, so that's we're, we're getting that together as well. And those are the two buckets of items that we're looking to submit for this first round. And then we're going to try and figure out over the summer what what end of August, early September looks like and what that means. And that's such it's a complete unknown at this point. But um, that's where we're at. And then lastly, I'd just like to you know say you know thank you to uh, the folks at town meeting and to the selectmen for supporting uh, the Bennett budget. It was a real tough year for us, um, but uh, you know we we kind of worked that through, and, and we appreciate uh, working collaboratively with with everyone to to get that done. So thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, Bree, did you have something? <laughs> no, it just fell over. <laughs> <laughs> you almost crushed my glasses. I'm sorry. I thought I was on mute. I apologize. Stay upright. John. Ray. Oh, sorry, Mark. John, are you going to stay with us or are you taking off from the meeting? John I uh, Williamson. I was planning to hang around for a little while more. Okay, because there was an item on the parking lot that I was hoping you could um, talk about. Great. Thank you. Um, you want to do that now or? Uh, um... Yeah, well, that what, sounds good, Mark. Okay, why don't we do that so John will be free to leave if they'd like. Okay. Would you like me to try to share my screen? I think we all have it in front of us, don't we? Well, John won't have it, and um, it looks like Dan is still on the call, and okay. I don't know if that's helpful. You know, for I think before we do that... Um, yeah, actually, there's a lot of... Items that are um, for John. <laughs> my intent was to uh, see it now. Yeah, my intent because first of all, I've got another list going that are just action items that over time we put together that ought to be added. I was thinking we almost need a meeting on this alone because it's going to take a good hour, maybe longer, to go through and add and talk through these. Um. Yeah, I and I, I was feeling like tonight, whatever we did tonight was mainly working to the degree we want to do this tonight as versus a separate meeting, working on getting the titles, the headlines right, rather than all the details of any of these projects. Um, and maybe we could organize it by, um, yeah, you know, yeah. One of, the, one, one of the things I did on the uh, action list I had was so beside each one, I would put um, like TA for if it, the town administrator was the uh, primary focus for that, recognizing that a lot of these have a lot more. But so that we could get an idea of uh, sort of what we're driving. I think we've got a lot to do given, you know, we've been kind of on a hiatus with COVID-19. We've total focus there, which rightly so. But now we've got a lot of things that, I don't want to say they've slipped, but they, that they haven't been addressed that I, I probably feel strongly about some, and I'm sure you have your favorites too. Um, so I, I do agree with you, uh, uh, Christine, that some of these can be regrouped. There's a bunch of them that are the town center campus committee, and we can put all all those under one. I would head. just eliminate those. Well, why would we have them on ours, except to say that the town campus committee is going to report back? Um, well, I think the only reason we'd have them on ours is if, especially if this is more or less the selectmen's projects and or priorities, it, it feels like that is one of our strong priorities, uh, supporting that committee and keeping an eye on what it's doing and projecting that into the big picture and in terms of... I'm not, a, I'm not disagreeing with you, Mark, and if you want to do that, but I do think we, uh, there's a lot more to add on this. Why don't we, before we go, why don't we town properties committee? Instead yes. Of... Oops. All right. Um, so uh, I know this is a little scattershot at this point, but Christine, did you have some particular questions for John while he's here? 
John. My big one for John was about the well, because that was like an ongoing issue at the bottom. Um, talk about the Dennett well, uh, Dennett well. Ah, yeah, that's all done. Yay! <laughs> um, so, yeah, so uh, I thought I could the world has been, has been interesting for so many things, even before COVID. Um, so, as you know, we put in a very expensive uh, water treatment um, facility, basically, at the Dennett to deal with the wells. Um, and we got all that up and running, and we ended up with tests that showed there was lead in the water and all sorts of other things going wrong. Um, nobody could figure that out. Um, and we, we kept testing and we weren't getting anything. Uh, the best guess is that you have, the system has two different um, sets of filters and they backwash every seven days. So each one backwashes, well, each one backwashes every 14 days, but they're offset by seven so that you always have one filter that's freshly clean and one that's getting dirtier, right? Uh, the best guess is that um, we ran the water sample and pulled in the backwash, which of course has never happened to any of our houses when that, you know, someone gets up in the middle of the night and turns on the water in the morning, you get up and the water smells and it's like, what the hell? Cause you pull the backwash into the, into the system. So I went through with Peter about how it is that they did the, how it is that they did the testing. And I think what ended up happening is, is they, well, you know, we run the water for a good period of time. And I think they ran it right at the end of the testing at that period. And they pulled in the bad water because how could you have almost very little lead coming out of the well untreated and then have more of it in the sample after it's been treated? I mean, this is not possible. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't. So, so we think what happened is, is that we literally tested the, what should have been discharged. And that's why we ended up with an accumulation of lead, which was significantly higher than what's coming out of the well untreated. So um, we've been following testing protocols uh, and we actually got a clean letter from DEP. So that is, that is done and done. Very good. Now that I've said that, We'll see what happens next. <laughs> that was five years. <laughs> so Thank you, you John. Take that off. All right. Uh, did you have other things, Christine, for John? Well, to answer Liz's question, I'd say yes. Let's take it off. It's done. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, it's done. All right. Um, I, I kind of agree with you, uh, John Trainer. I, I think maybe this is a, a, um, a working meeting at some point, maybe, and at least an hour dedicated just to this. I, th I certainly think so. Um, and I think there's a lot more to add. We may end up then just scratching them after we've talked about it. But I think there's things I would like to talk about that I'm not sure where you all stand or for that matter, I'm not sure where I stand sometimes. <laughs> um, so I, that I, I, um, uh, the wisdom of a working meeting and kind of a broad noodling of stuff makes sense. Um, maybe the wisdom of each of us seeing what else we might want to potentially add to the list as well. Um, I'd be glad to send out my ads. Uh, and, you know, I, maybe, uh, we have an obvious whiz here who's rewriting this thing as we speak beautifully. Uh, um, maybe she can add um, whatever each of us want to add and then we can yes. work on um, deciding what we want to keep and maybe work on prior to prioritizing a little. I, I, I think we all um, on this board and in all organizations get way overly ambitious and then end up with a list that we can't come close dealing with. So I hope what we can do is, is in fact, prioritize, um, which brings me back to this idea of changing the name of this thing and maybe calling it Selectman's Projects and Priorities. It's fine by me. No, that sounds good to me too. Can we, when we do this, can we um, look at our goals again? Just make sure that these are all in line with our goals or if we need to change our goals as a board. I think that's a good idea. That's Absolutely. a good idea. Absolutely. 
So are, are we interested in working on this fairly soon in terms of a working meeting? I, I don't know why we just don't call a meeting, the next meeting and get into it. It'll, it'll sort of set the direction for the next year. Um, say I don't the think meeting. that there's anything overly pressing that's coming up for the July 6th meeting. So I think you could devote a bulk of the time, like an hour or two hours, whatever it is to, to this, that could be the main, the main thing. I mean, I don't see anything else scheduled for that agenda that's off, that's terribly pressing. So I think that we should make this maybe in the goals and all of that, like the priority for that next meeting. Great. So is so John we, available? John Wilhelmson? So, <laughs> yep. Such enthusiasm. <laughs> Yeah, and um, Liz, what do I want to add townhouse roof under? Yes, thank you. So um, I, I think we each maybe should send to Liz um, potential other topics, and Liz can maybe fit them in where they seem most appropriate, and then we can we can work on adjusting at the meeting in two weeks. Okay. Good. And then, um, Mark, I know you and John have, have both been at many of those meetings, but do you want 30 seconds on sort of what the town properties committee, Christine, is, is, is focused on right now? Sure. So we have, we have two prongs. We have one, the, the working with the consultants on trying to figure out what a master plan might look like. Um, and we've had a, two meetings with the consultants, and I actually have to follow up with them because we need to reschedule our next meeting and get some more feedback from them. Um, so that's that's one piece of it, and then the other piece that we're now going to start to really focus on too is categorizing the various issues that we have with with buildings and other property in town, and trying to get more of a get it more into a grid, and really focus it as more of a long term planning because I expect for many of these items we don't know what we don't know yet, and so like with the townhouse roof we probably need to spend some money to understand what we need to do to fix all of that because we keep throwing shingles on that roof and it's not working, right? So like we did with Dennett, do a, do a study, the water issues with the lower part of the townhouse, same sort of thing. Do we need to snake the pipes and take a look and assess so that we can come up with a list of things that gives us a really educated view as to what the problems are and in what order we, we, we fix them you know and and also some idea of what the cost is because nothing is of course free but we we need instead of just sort of trying to get you know the contractor in to kind of give us their thoughts we want to you know think about it study it and come up with this is the plan i always i liken this to what we did with the library and the water issues they were having over there when they came to cpc and wanted to paint the inside of the foundation and we said no 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 hold on can we take a let's look at the root of the problem and let's stop the water before it gets in rather than once it's already through the walls. And they end up doing the French drain system and they have a basement that they can use again. So I think that's the sort of pragmatic approach that we're gonna take and we're sort of doing those two things, you know, concurrently. We just had a little break with COVID so we're a little not where quite where we wanna be. And the hope is, is that we'll be able to do that. Um, we'll be able to have that information so that as we get start thinking about town meeting each year, we have some really good thought behind what we're bringing forward and what we're sort of moving the ball down, down, the, down the court. Very good. All right, anything else on uh, Selectman's priorities? So I think we're back to Liz, probably down to admin update. Sure, so we've been trying to get the ball rolling with some of our other projects that, as John had mentioned, were somewhat put on hold. Um, we have our hazard mitigation plan grant, and we're going to be putting together an RFP to get a consultant on board, um, similar to what we did for the MVP program, and they're going to work on that with us. Um, I also had it feels like a while ago now, but it wasn't that long ago. Um, a very productive meeting with Old Colony Planning Council. And we just kind of, we're both giving one another an update on where a lot of different projects stand. And I think it was very beneficial for both of us. They wanted to know if there was anything that we needed help with 
Um, and likewise, the hazard mitigation plan, um, that may be something that I think it could be really helpful for us with, because we have a small plan right now that's contained within their larger plan um, for their service area. So that was a very productive meeting and I think a lot of good will come from that. Um, additionally, Linda Letty was able to lead the charge with the recent MVP action grant proposal. Um, I've been keeping Mark in the loop on that and we were fortunate enough to obtain the services, um, joint services with some old colony planning staff folks, but also Bill Napolitano of SERPED, who has been a champion of the Taunton River watershed area. Um, everybody kind of band together and was able to help get this application pulled together. Um, so we really owe Bill and his staff and his regional team um, a great deal of thanks. They're the ones, we were right amidst town meeting time and budgeting and everything. And Linda came forward and she deserves a big thank you as well. She really went above and beyond coordinating everything. And then Bill and he assembled this kind of unique grouping of people. Um, we're also getting some funding in relation to this project, some match funds from the Taunton River, the Taunton River Stewardship Council. Um, so hats off to those folks for getting it done for us. Um, they really deserve all the credit there. So that application was submitted successfully. Um, back on Thursday, and we also heard Thursday that we are getting those match funds that if we get the action grant, we'll be able to actually utilize it. Um, so that's a good thing that's going on. Also to the final update, the three lots that were for sale on Prospect Road, um, lots one and two, we are in the final stages of the purchase and sale development. Um, the attorneys are going back and forth on just some very minor final details. So I expect that I'll have that to the board um, available for signature very soon, probably within a matter of a few days. And the purchase and sale for lot three that you all signed the other night, um, that has been mailed to town council and we're just awaiting some final steps and the closing should happen relatively soon. Um, where it is the sale of town-owned land, it's not quite the same as traditional real estate. There is no closing date per se specified in the agreement. It's just within 60 days from execution of the agreement. But all things are a go with lot three, and it seems like that closing will occur sooner rather than later. So um, waiting for that one to fully fully clear and that'll be a very large project off our plates and a, a win for the town and we can all move forward from that. So that concludes my updates. And I also, I didn't have anything substantial in correspondence for you. Okay. So I think that brings us down to uh, approval of minutes. Anything anyone wants to bring up before we go to minutes and then to raves? All right, so I think we have two sets of minutes here. Uh, uh, first, June 8th. Everyone have a chance to take a look at these? I submitted my uh, amendments. Uh, oh, you did, right. Very good. Um, uh, okay, uh, if there aren't any changes, um, do I hear a motion to accept the minutes? I'll make a motion I'll, to accept the minutes. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And Aye. Mark, what was that date on that one? That was, was that... Uh, June 8th. Okay, thank you. And now uh, June 17th. This is a lengthy presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion we accept the minutes uh, from Wednesday, June 17th as written. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We're up to uh, rants and raves. Do I hear a volunteer? A volunteer. All right. So my rave would be all of the people that came out to town meeting. I know it was um, 
kind of a, a scary experience, a lot of uh, unknowns, but they came out and uh, they took care of business, what we needed to have done in order for uh, town government to function. So thank you to everyone who came out and, um, and voted. We had some, some lively discussion and debate, which is always nice. And uh, it was good to see uh, the people that were out. I concur. John? Uh, I have more of a story. Um, about 50 years ago, a binder walked out of here that somebody decided they wanted for their own, uh, their own library that should have been part of the town records. And ultimately, uh, that person passed away recently. And when their uh, children were cleaning out the, the house, they found the binder and they knew that there was a person that they had originally grown up with in Plimpton and they offered that to that person. And uh, I asked him if I could use his name, but I haven't heard back. So I'm gonna just pass over on that. But I'm happy to report that the 1899 book of Plimpton Town ba Boundaries official book <laughs> is now back in the town vault. So my rave is that uh, we, we got it. <laughs> cool. Um, so two raves for me. I, I first for uh, Christine Joy, having finished her term as uh, uh, chair of the Board of Selectmen. Um, I love to observe uh, uh, the various styles, lots of different ways to get things done. And I love looking at the different styles and the way people get things done. I particularly like um, seeing how they um, are able to act as a presence and really quiet but strong leadership. So I'm very appreciative of having the opportunity to sit next to Christine and uh, as always learn from her. So thank you very much for your service. Uh, I so. concur, here, here. Uh, the other one, my other rave is for the town employees in general. Um, we ha began talking about the budget process many months ago. COVID came along, the concerns of the instability and economic uncertainty. Um, we asked everyone to accept uh, a, a, a cost of living increase, but forego um, uh, um, a uh, um, uh, merit increase um, that included uh, salaried contract uh, people, senior people, um, fire, Liz, um, police, who all willingly uh, forego or, or allowed us to forego their raises. Um, and it gave us a chance to have uh, a modest COLA without losing any employees. And it gave us the opportunity to kind of balance keeping the tax rate as moderate as possible, offering services and people being rewarded to the degree that we're able to reward. But that, that took the cooperation of town employees and um, I know some weren't absolutely thrilled with not having the merit increase, but I am so appreciative of everyone um, putting up with all of that. Uh, I'm part of a I'm treasurer for a national nonprofit organization where senior staff had to all take a 20% increase and we just laid off half the staff and the agony, the sadness of that. Um, so far, we've been able to avoid that kind of stuff in Plumpton. And a lot of the reason is people are willing to help out and cooperate. So my hat's off to town employees. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, any last words anywhere? Can I ask John Wilhelmson, are we on tomorrow for negotiations, Dennett? What time? You're muted, John. Okay, uh, just let me look here. Um, while I'm doing this, um, I don't know if folks had heard that Dick Gawley passed away. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, that's just, I think, worth, worth noting. He, he was an interesting, interesting character, but he certainly cared about this town. Um, he was an so institution. He was. <laughs> you know, there's a big industrial park over there that 
that has certainly helped for a lot of years of work on that. So it's, it's a shame. Um, we are, uh, there's, Jill had sent out, and I, I can just resend to you, there's two Google Meets, um, one for 5.15 for us to get together and chat, okay. and then the actual starts at 5.30. Beautiful. So, okay. Thank, thank you, John. You. I'd appreciate I'll, that. I'll resend. Great. Thank you. Okay, everyone, uh, barring any, uh, anything, uh, July 6th, we'll do it all again. Excellent. Happy Thanks 4th. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Happy Thank summer. You. Cheers. Bye. Good night. Good, Good night. Evening. Thank you.